is Israel All Praises. Uh, good to be back with you all again on another Sunday. Uh, welcome to Wake Up Jacob. Um, and we're going to read this disclaimer first. All right. Israel United in Christ. We are not a hate group. We are not affiliated with any other Israelite group. Israel United in Christ is a nonviolent Bible-based movement. We do not advocate or condone any acts of violence against any race, ethnicity, or gender. We advise that if anyone hears or knows of any plots to cause harm to anyone or to break the laws of the land, you must contact the proper authorities to bring awareness to any possible threat, as stated in Leviticus chapter 5 and verse 1. All praises, all praises. All right, so we're going to jump right into class. All right. So understanding, uh, we want to touch on today because, you know, we, we're going through it. We've been afflicted right now. All right. And this is nothing new for the children of Israel. All right. This is nothing new for, for us or our forefathers. All right. Um, let's go to Romans. What, is it? what I want. 15 to 4. Because we have to look to the path, to the past to help guide us and lead us and strengthen our faith in this, this present time, this present day. Romans 15 and 4. Let's read that. This is the book of Romans chapter 15 and verse 4. Mm -hmm. For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. It said, for whatsoever things were written aforetime, meaning in the past, all right, as our forefathers in the New Testament were what? Reading and, and learning and having examples of things that happened in the past. That's the same today. We're reading the new and old together, understanding what happened to our forefathers in the past to help us in present day to, be, to have a comfort, to have hope, right? To not be fearful or you know, caught up in these things like Deacon was going over last night with the coronavirus when you got other things behind the scenes happening. You understand? Our mindset and our focus should be on keeping these commandments in the faith of Christ. All right? And not getting shook on the things that our Father, the God of the children of Israel, is doing on earth. All right? So from there, let's go. And I'm a, uh, let's read the definition of faithful. I don't know if y'all can pull it up for me real quick. But the definition of faithful. Because, as I always say, these words, they mean, they have meanings. And the meaning, uh, I want to say, the meaning shows uh, what the word means. Uh, yeah. The action behind the word, rather. All right? So you got faithful? Read that, faithful. And I got a definition here as well. But. This is the Google definition of faithful. Okay. Okay. It is a adjective meaning loyal, constant, and steadfast. Verse 2, true to the facts or the original. Okay. So that, that first, first one is good. Read it, the first one again. First definition, loyal, constant, and steadfast. Okay, loyal is, is, a, is a heavy one. Loyal, faithful, meaning loyal, meaning you're not going to turn your back on the most high or your people or you know what I'm saying that's very 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 important because I remember Deacon Malachi went over a class in Chicago and of course it's on YouTube today but that's a good class going into loyalty all right our loyalty is to the most high and the whole system and order in which he set up you understand so that loyalty is a very important I'm gonna read a, another two definitions faithful strict or thorough in performance of duty Strict or thorough in performance of duty. That's faithful. We're going to go through different men that were found faithful in the Most High's eyes. To be faithful in performance of their duties in which what he told them to do. This is us today. Bring it back to today. We have to be faithful in our duties to the Most High. You understand? Is the second definition. It's a true to one's word. 
our forefathers were true to their word. That's a part of loyalty. That's a part of saying, uh, how, how you say it, Cap? Um, a word, how you say that? You always say that. Your, your words is a deposit for your action, how it go? Something like that. Right. It, it's, yeah, it's a receipt for your actions. So if I told the Most High, I'm going to do this, because well, he commanded me to do this, okay, I'm going to do this, Father, then you're going to do it. You're going to perform that duty, that vow. And that's that's the next one. It's a, a true to one's word, promise, vow, etc. So those three words are very, very heavy. All right. So let's go to Deuteronomy 7 and 7. Because we made a vow to the Most High. All right. This is a covenant, a vow that we made to God. All right. Let's read that. Deuteronomy 7 and 7. We're going to read to verse 9. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 7 and verse 7. Uh -huh. The Lord did not set his love upon you, nor choose you, because ye were more in number than any people, mm -hmm. for ye were the fewest of all people. Mm -hmm. But because the Lord loved you, and because he would keep the oath which he has sworn unto your fathers, hath the Lord brought you out with a mighty hand, and redeemed you out of the house of bondmen from the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. So this is the example in which the Most High, because the Most High never broke his covenant with the children of Israel. Ever, ever. Okay? From the old to the new covenant, brothers and sisters, have only been for the children of Israel. That's it. Our father said he won't break that oath. All right? And that oath goes with what? Them curses that we live in today. All right. If you do A, B, C, I'm going to give you X, Y, Z, the blessings. Right. If you do, you know, C, D, whatever, and not follow the commandments, you go get curses. You go be under the subjection of these other nations. OK, you go be their servants and hands made handmaids. All right. Today. All right. So keep reading. Verse nine. Verse nine. Know therefore that the Lord thy God, he is God, mm -hmm. the faithful God, mm -hmm. which keepeth covenant and mercy with them that love him and keep his commandments to a thousand generations. See that? You see what the Most High just said? He said, knowing therefore that the Lord thy God, he is God, the faithful God. Remember, we just read you the definition of faithful, strict, a thorough and performance of duty, true to one's word. Promises, vows, oaths, all these things the most high God is faithful and true to. All right. We have to be and in, in apply as such as him, as being his children. All right. So their vow, oath, and promises to him. From Abraham, Isaac to Jacob, he promised these things to us. All right. Let's go to Peter's. First Peter's four and seventeen. Yes, after nine. Can you, uh, can you read verse um, nine? I mean ten. Yes, sir. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 7 and verse 10. And repayeth them that hate him to their face to destroy them. He will not be slack to him that hateth him. He will repay him to his face. You see that? The, that's, that's another faith that you have to have. If you don't keep these commandments, whoever wrong the most high, he's going to repay you right. to your face. You know, who want an unfaithful friend? The most I want, like you want a faithful friend, the most I want a faithful servant to trust in him and everything. A lot of our people have turned their back. When times get hard, then they guess what? This this, this not my Bible, not my God. Right, right, my life right. was better right. be, before I came to serve the Lord. So obviously this is not true. Mm -hmm. I'm going to show you, can I put one precept to show you unfaithful? Right, right. You know, to where these, are, like it goes back to what Captain was going into in Romans 15 and 4. Everything written before time is written for our learning that we may have hope. Hope give you direction. Hope give you an identity. Hope give you faith. It give you it give you patience. It give you experience. All these type of things is build up your spirit. You know, you go back and read our forefathers, and you can, we can clearly read the time of the Babylonian captivity. How people went off, and we say, how could they do that? You know, what I mean, the, the um the um Persian Medes captivity. How did our people do that? You know, and when you look at the um, the Greek captivity, you look, how can our people do that? No, you got to use that as as study cases right, right. to where you at right now and say, how can I not duplicate what they done 
and turn my back on the most high and get repaid vengeance to my face. Captivity, the curses, first five, last high, the ghettos, the slums. Now, because the most high is plaguing the world, we have to be in the midst of it. Why? Because we consumed by the Gentiles. We in the midst of them. But we understand that the most high is faith and just to save the righteous. We understand that. But if you was in your right state of mind and then turn your back and 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 and, and uh um uh, how to backslide, right, right, right. <laughs> you know, and, and cast the most high game plan to the side and, and pick up your own vain imagination, right. you wouldn't even be over here. But it's so easy to say how our forefathers went off back in the day. They had the same temptation. They had the same lust that you presented to with this day. Right. So let's show you one of, one of the ways. Uh, um, first Maccabees 1. Let me see. 11. Because when, when that's why the most I tell us in repentance, you have to acknowledge your wrong, right, right. your own wrong, and the wrongs of your forefathers. That what the Most High done is just. Because a lot of times when we in the ghettos and the slums, we always we always questioning and angry with God. Right, right, right. You know what I'm saying? It's His fault. You know what I'm saying? Then we had that woe is me spirit in trying to place the blame. Right, right, right. Instead blame of taking game. accountability mm -hmm. and saying we jacked up, we messed up. Mm -hmm. right. That's the first sign of humility. That's right. That's right. You know what I mean? A broken and constrained heart. When a person can, who really acknowledge you as a friend, as a confidant, as a leader, as a provider, and say, you know what? I wronged you. You did nothing but good for me. And I got in my own emotions. I couldn't handle my own um, problems, and I lost faith. And then when I lose faith, what, what comes with losing faith? Disrespect, breaking right. laws, That's breaking right. commandments. Uh, uh, um, self will. That's what comes with breaking the law. I mean, That's losing right. faith. Right. Because when you lose faith, that means I don't trust you like that no more. Right. I gotta find a way. Right. So these are the things that we battle with Israel, and that's why the Most High said you have to acknowledge your wrong, not only your wrongs, but the wrongs of your forefathers. Right. That's right. Go ahead. First Maccabees chapter one and verse eleven. In those days went. There out of Israel wicked men who persuaded many, saying, Let us go and make wait, a wait, covenant. Wait. It says, In those days went out of of Israel wicked men. Wicked men. What is these wicked men suffering from? Lack of faith. Right. Lack of oath. Lack of vow. Lack of integrity. Right. They lack that. Because it's something that they saw triggered them and said, I cannot have my faith in God anymore. I have to put my faith in my oppressor. It, it, what triggered in them was the fear. The fear. The fear. That's one, one attribute. major attribute. And and it was the, the class that Deacon I done brought out was was amazing. You know, when it goes in when you go into John, it say um the 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 the, the love casts away fear. Right. You know right. they have a saying in the world Fear is stronger than love. You got to revamp that. Right, right. Fear is stronger than fake love. Because the love that Christ had for you, he stood up in the face of fear. That's right. So that's right. fear wasn't stronger than his true love. So fear is stronger than fake love. Right. So that's why we have to come and repent and have that strong brotherly love and a love in the Most High. That no matter what, life or death, I'm serving the Most High. That's right. That's right. But these men right here, they saw fear and they saw the pressure was rising. They said, nah. Let's, let's go on to get out while we can and make a covenant. Go with the heathens. Read. In those days went there out of Israel wicked men who persuaded many, saying, Let us go and make a covenant with the heathen that, that are around about us. For since we departed from them, we have had much sorrow. You see what they did? These wicked men didn't only want to be wicked amongst and making a, 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 a federation amongst themselves. They said, no, let's go persuade other people to keep the um to, to keep the um the uh the, the, the um the commandments of the heathens. Right, right, right. That's why you have to build up your faith. You have to study, you have to pray, you have to make applications, mm -hmm. you know. Not only for now, but prepare for the danger that to come. That's right. Especially Israel, those who are prophesied. Because 
a lot of brothers' faith is on a slippery slope right now. Right, right. You talking about five G? You you just you talking about everything except this Bible. Right, that's right. But that's all I wanted to show you: uh, 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 just a small portion of faithless through fear. That's right. That's right. Because uh, that's that's what this at the end of the day that's what this is about Put is fear. Up. Fear is a is a uh, is a major bargaining chip. That's right. I'm back on you, Cap. When, hey, when, Cap. Can I bring out a precept real quick? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, Deuteronomy chapter twenty and verse three. That's, because that's, Cap, I, that's on point when when you say fear is it's like the major um, stumbling block to our people because it control your mindset. Whether I'm gonna do X Y Z, you know. Live for righteousness, or do the right thing, or do the wrong thing. You know what I'm saying? Because you, you, in fear of the outcome of you not doing what the Most High say, I mean, what the heathens say rather than what the Most High say. Because that's what that chapter going into that Cap was bringing out. You know, it comes with compromising. Right, right. You know there you saying? go. When when you stand when when there's no comp there's no compromising when thou should not commit adultery. Right. You know what I'm saying? There is no compromising with that. That when, when the Most High give you a come a, a commandment, He's not leaving enough for your discretion. Right. You know how people say, uh, um, they want the most. Um, I think I heard you talking about it, talking about conforming to the world. Right, right, you know, right. They want God to conform to them. Right, right. You know right, what I'm saying? Right. You want God to conform to you as you conform to the world. Right. Pretty and much. the world is evil. Right. Come and, on now. Right. And the scriptures say what? He that be a friend of God of the world is an enemy of God. That's right. But it just shows you faithless. Right. I got one precept off, so I'm going to give it right back to you. Just touch on that fear before we move forward. Um, Wisdom of Solomon 17 and 12. Just showed you the power of fear. It's the book of the Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 17 and verse 12. For fear is nothing else but a betraying of the succors, which reason offereth. You see that? A fear is really a betrayer of the commandments. The betrayer of the truth. It's going to betray you to where, do I really want to stand up for righteousness right now? Do I really want to die for the truth? You know what I'm saying? Do I really want to lose my job right. and go out on the street teaching and my boss might see me? Right. right. So, therefore, the fear is going to make me say, you know what? Do you got something behind the scenes I can work on a, on, on IT or something? <laughs> I can be at the school on security? Right. No, you going when, when it's coming to this truth, you need to go where you are as you are needed. That's because right. the most I put the spirit, your spirit back on this earth to do his will, That's not right. the will of your Fortune 500 company. Right. That's all I have. That's it. Something else off? Yes, sir. Deuteronomy right. 20 and 3. Um, because we know every day is a battle. Every day is a fight. Right. You know, our people wrestle, we wrestle against, wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities. And that's what we definitely see in the principalities raise themselves up now. Things that, like the leadership keep bringing out, things that we've never, I've never seen nothing like this in my entire life. You know, they, they literally shut everything down. And that, like you said, Captain, that could bring a fear to our people because they've never really seen this type of power from from Esau in this lifetime. Right. The <laughs> whole world is on one accord right now. Right. You right. Know what I'm because they scared of the play. They scared of the most high right Yes, now. sir. Yes, sir. But uh, could y'all bring that out real quick, please? I got you. Yes, this sir. is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 20 and verse 3. Uh huh. And shall so say unto them, Hear, O Israel. Ye approach this day unto battle against your enemies. Because that's what we're telling our people every day. Keep the commandments. The battle is not a physical battle like it was in this time. It's a spiritual battle. It's dealing with the lust of our flesh, trying to overcome, like today. What is today? Easter. Right. They were fighting as much as they could to open the country back up right. to have Easter right. and all these wicked holidays. Right. And so our they, people can go, <laughs> they can go to the park and... and, and uh, Find Easter Easter eggs and right. all the other food. Right, you could you could do away with social distancing just for a day, you know. So our people are not seeing it. You know, they it's it's so much going on that bring fear to our people. But we fight against those things, not against a physical fight like before. Come on, 
Let not your hearts faint. Uh huh. Fear not. And fear do, what? Fear not. Uh huh. And do not tremble. Neither be ye terrified because of them. Verse four. Come on. For the Lord your God uh -huh. is He that goeth with you to fight for you against your enemies to save you. So the Lord is the one that's gonna save us, because He said in Luke one and sixty eight. Even though we gotta uh, serve the Lord with fear, He's gonna come and deliver us. That's the faith we gotta have, so that. Like you said, we keep the commandments like the class yesterday. It'll cast out that fear because we know the Lord is going to deliver us. That's on point. That's on point. Also. Hey, got one more preset real quick. Go ahead. Because uh, I'm, I'm listening to what y'all are bringing out, talking about that fear. And uh, I want Israel to understand that, you know, when you came to serve the Lord, he told you that from the get-go in the instructions. You're not supposed to fear anything above him, you know. When it comes to anything and everything that can affect us in this world, this Corona-19, these diseases, these pestilence, uh, Esau controlling and moving his government around, God said, don't fear these things. Real quick, Sirach chapter 2, verse 1. Um, like I said, it's, it's in the basics. It's in the basics. When you come to serve the Lord, okay, let's see what the Most High is saying right here in these scriptures. It's, it's very simple. This is the book of Sirach chapter 2 and verse 1. Mm -hmm. My son, if thou come to serve the Lord... Prepare thy soul for temptation. So the Most High has already told you, get ready. There's going to be some things that's coming your way simply because you come to keep my laws. So he's telling you from the jump, get ready. Uh, read verse 2. Hey, officer. And yes, what's that, Like understanding the heathens, these mm -hmm. other nations, the, el the, the elite of them, they know who we be. Mm -hmm. That's right. You know what I'm yes, saying? Sir. So yes, they know, as it says in Judith, if we keep breaking the commandments, they can continue to rule. Mm -hmm. Right. You understand? Mm -hmm. yes, they sir. don't want us to rise up, wake up, come back, gather ourselves together to do what? Keep these commandments. They understand when these things start to happen because that's where we're at right now. You know what I'm saying? Through all these things that's happening, you're going to have a lot of people repenting through this because they know mm -hmm. now that they see the signs that, okay, man, I got to do something. I have to change my life now. You know what I'm saying? And cars been coming in like Israel is waking up rapidly, right? Mm. Rapidly. Week to week, we getting call this number, call that number, so on and so forth. Why? Because Israel is saying, whether they've been watching this for a year, two, three, five, ten, whatever, okay, it's time to it's gone. It's time to step up and make that change. Because they see, as Deacon was bringing out yesterday, World War Three is at hand. That's mm. right. You understand? Go ahead, officer. Yes, sir. Read read that again. The book of Sirach, chapter 2 and verse 1. Mm -hmm. My son, if thou come to serve the Lord, prepare thy soul for temptation. So the Most High is telling you right here from jump, there's going to be some things that are coming your way. I need you to prepare yourself. Cast away the fears. Put your trust in me. That's what it said. Prepare thyself for what? Prepare your soul for what? Temptation. Temptations. That means what? Put away the fear. Put away the weakness. Take that, take that weak nature off of you because you need to get ready. There's going to be some, there's going to be some adversaries and some disturbances and some right. troublesome times. So prepare yourself for the temptations. Okay. Re verse two, and, this, and I'll stop yes, it right sir. there. Mm -hmm. Set thy heart aright. Get your mind right. Because like the captain brought out, fear is nothing but what? A um, betrayal. Yeah, betrayal of the succors. Meaning what? That's just your feelings. You're in your, you're inside your emotions. You're sitting up there and you 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 take. You sit up there and you you look at things through the way you feel, versus listening, leaning on the word of God. You're leaning on your own understanding with your emotions, right? That's through right. the eyes of your person. Yeah, exactly. Like remember, that's the mindset that all of us had mm -hmm. through the eyes or through the understanding or through the teachings of our oppressor. That's right. why we fear. That's why we're scared because we feel we're going against master. We're mm -hmm. going against all these nations that had us in captivity. We're going against them. Mm -hmm. And that's why um, the deacon always say, if you take away the, the, the media, the, the TV, the radio, Jake have no opinion. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And that's why I say you got to be born again. Renew mm -hmm. your mind on how you think. You know, how you reason. You know, not how you reason according to the, to the radio or the TV. 
or or your uh, or your enemy's philosophy. But how do God want you to reason? He wants you to reason through the scriptures. Right. Sit your butt down and meditate on the word. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's what He wants you to do. Right. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, I was gonna say. I was just gonna make a statement real quick on that. Uh, like when it comes to the the fear, you think of fear, doubt. You see what I'm saying? But then when you think about the opposite, because with fear and doubt, those are things that you imagine. You imagine fear. You imagine doubt. But then how, what did the Bible say, though, when it comes to faith? Things that we have not seen, it still come with you got to believe it, even though you can't see it. So mm. look at the two. Which one you going to let rule, you know? Hey, that's heavy what you say right there, also, because here's another thing with fear. Like you said, that was something that was given to us from these other nations that enslaved us. They showed us what they would do to us we seen that with our eyes and we said okay we're scared of this we're scared of that hey that's why they had examples yes sir through slavery <laughs> mm -hmm. butt breaking right mm -hmm. um they mm -hmm. would you know beat Hang, the man torturing. Hang, mm -hmm. right yes yeah. lynchings mm -hmm. pulling men apart with horses mm -hmm. this, yes sir all these different things was to put the what fear in you exactly basically, right exactly so they they put that they put that belief in us to the point of where we see, we know the example that's been given in case we decide to go against what right. they say. Right. But he, here's the thing with, with Israel. We read and we understand what's going to happen, and we understand the fear that we need to have when it comes to keeping God's laws right. because we can read and see what it is that he's going to do in the future if you're disobeying his laws. Right. Okay. But real quick, let's finish verse 2 real quick. It says, uh, set thy heart aright and what? And constantly endure. Constantly endure, meaning be faithful to these laws. Keep his law, statutes, and commandments. Read. And make not haste in time of trouble. And make it not haste in time of trouble. Be patient to go through the things that you have to go through, those temptations, those trials, those tribulations. Because everything that he's bringing you through is to take that fear that these other nations instilled in you to take it out of you, to remove it. And, and that's and that's heavy with that, that um that verse two is say set that heart all right and constantly endure that mean in the time of, of affliction that's where your faith come in at and say what does the most high say about this what can i find this situation in the bible because if he's the god of the living and every and he written the end before the beginning so therefore what i'm at right now is there so i have to meditate and go out, go to the spiritual advisors that the Most High set up. Not just your financial advisor, but your, you have a spiritual advisor right, right, right. that's that the Most High set in place to bring the children' heart back to the Father, to give them what peace in a time of affliction, to settle their spirit. Yeah, that's the class we went over not too long ago. The spiritual pie. That's part two. <laughs> the spiritual pie, and and because you basically, as they take away our time. We don't know. We don't have time to seek the Most High. That's you know right. I'm saying that's why our faith, our trust, our, all these things is low, lacking thereof. Right. Right. You give seventy five percent. You get seventy five percent to your job, probably more. Seventy five percent to your job. You give um, twenty percent to your family, and you give five percent to God. You see how that work? And then you know you know what you get with five percent. God love everybody. God knows my heart. God laws are done away with. That's what five percent gets you. That's not a person in doing it constantly trying to seek the most high to get answers to um to questions that what's going on around him. Because truly our people are faithless. They think God have no nothing to do with this. My God don't create evil. My God has got his headphones on right now and just got his feet kicked up and hand behind his head and said, How let me when you how let me when you get back? No. Hey, Cap, something heavy you said right there. You give 75% of your time to Esau. Here it is. You didn't give all this time to Esau. Some of us even put in overtime to Esau. Your faith was in Esau. And now here comes a little COVID-19. Esau done kicked you to the curb. A lot of y'all are, are out of work. You've been laid off or you have been terminated. And you gave all that time and all that faithfulness to Esau. Where is your faith now? It's just a question for Israel. Where is your faith now? Hey, Cap, can I land back off of what you brought out about the, the, the spiritual pie? Uh, Galatians chapter 6 and verses 7 through 8. I'll read it real quick, officer, so we can, you know, or, or if you want, that's fine. Um, 
But uh, I got you. Yes, sir. Galatians 6 and 7 through 8. The book of Galatians chapter 6 and verse 7. All right. Be not deceived. Uh -huh. God is not mocked. Uh -huh. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he reap also. Come on. For he that soweth to his flesh. So remember, Cap, you was bringing out how our people, they have money. They have all these various things because they sowing unto the fleshly things. Come on. Shall of the flesh reap corruption. And you was also, all three of y'all was bringing out last week about how they are reaping that corruption now because the stock market crashing. They losing their money through uh, 401ks as Bishop been bringing, been bringing out. So our people are reaping that corruption because it was not things like y'all brought out that was, uh, they treasures were not in heaven. Right, right. Come on. Earthly thing. But he that soweth to the spirit. So like Captain was just bringing out and you brought out in spiritual pie, when we sow into the spirit or the spiritual things, the spiritual gifts trying to overcome our own uh, 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 shortcomings and, and shortfalls that keep us from serving the Lord properly. Come on. Shall of the spirit reap life everlasting. And as we keep these commandments and learning how to discipline ourselves more and more, we'll reap that everlasting life, like it says in Matthew 19, 16 through 17. So, yeah, I just want to land back off what yeah, uh, Captain uh, Arama was bringing that's, out. That's go heavy, with your bro. class from last right. week. That's heavy. That's heavy, bro. You know, like I say, Israel, man, y'all, what we're going through is, is to gird us up and make and prepare our minds for what's to come. You know what I'm saying? Um, let's go to uh, First Peter 4 and 17. Because we go get to Hebrews 11, you know, because that's the, the basis of the class as well. You know what I'm saying? That's the elephant in the room, right, because that's one of my favorite chapters. Right, right, because it, it tells you our forefathers went through this, you know. It's the book of First Peter, chapter 4, and verse 17. For the time is come that judgment must begin at the house of God. And if it begin, if it first begin at us, what shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of God? So the Most High is showing you, first off, that judgment was, is going to start with who? Us. As we start, as we seeing through this COVID-19 stuff that, you know, it's Moab. It's, it's the, the other nations that's getting, getting hit, right? But then you really see who, who getting hit. Who's the target? Us. You know what I'm saying? It's us. You know what I'm saying? The most high hitting us first because these things are meant for us to do what? To wake up, to repent, right? To repent, to turn back to the Father, to treat, to, to seek the true gospel, the true good news of this Bible, not the lies and fairy tales that you've been told, you know? Oh, you got thought you had some count. Yeah, and what the captain is, is touching on is, is mighty, you know, and it's heavy, you know, and I pray that, you know, um, Israel can, can, um, can bear that. Because it's very, you know, um, it can be very alarming to the unfaithful. You know, this virus, you know, is, is meant not for the world. It's meant for you, Israel. It's meant for you. You can look at it as a whole world. You can hide amongst the trees like, like uh, my forefathers, like Adam and Eve, and try to hide and cover yourself up and say, it's not, it's not just me. You know what I'm saying? Hey, Cap, in that, you can hide whatever you try to do, but then what happened to them? They still got judged. Yeah, you open that Bring door. Bring it out. You open that door to get that, that package from the post office. <laughs> Congratulations, guy. You got COVID-19. Right, right. You got served. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but the point is, this right here is to show Israel to wake up that Everything that we knew about money, silver, and gold, that's what we put our trust in. And the most I showing you right now that don't put your trust in those things. You gotta cash, you gotta invest in your spirit. It's in heaven where it don't rot or spoil. Everything else is gonna get burnt up. So this right here is to, to so Israel can to, to 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 be mindful, to consider their ways and say, you know what? That's why we say you got to meditate what the most I want for you. And that's why when, when the captain is going on to, to um, Peter, 1 Peter 4 and 17 about the righteous, the righteous being scarcely saved, that's important. Because this is not going to everybody right. It's going to you, Israel. So what does this virus got to do with me? And what, what does God have to say about this? What, what is God is trying to tell Israel, you better wake up. 
because silver and gold is not going to save you. Because when we go down these highways and we see all these um, testing centers that set up for COVID-19, I see Bentleys, I see Lexus, I see Hoopties, I see everything in that line. Everybody's made equal now. Everybody is equal. That's how equality look. And it it took a virus to show you that. So the thing is, what the most side is trying to show Israel, I'm not doing this because everybody's not going to see this because everybody don't understand the word. That's why you, because everybody's not watching and well, and, and, and they're not um, praying as well. They're not preparing for this. We are, the, the faithful are praying for this day. Right. So they know what this day looks like. Mm-hmm. They know what it's going to feel like if they've been meditating on the word. While the whole world is shooking up and saying, Please, government, um, can you can you restore our normal life back to um, uh, uh, um, uh, VH1 and my my job? And can you restore my life back to that government? Right. Trump transgression on the Sabbath, going back to the movies, doing all everything. Can you open a strip club do? back up? Yeah, NFL, right. Can you open NBA. the club back up so we could just leave right, the party right, and break right. God's laws? <laughs> can you please, sir? Uh, right, right, right. I just want a little love, and this this wife of mine is not doing it. Hey, mm. hey, <laughs> Cap. That's they, how we supposed to fix it. She get me mad. I go to the club. Right, right. You know what I mean? Bring I'm, it out. Me I'm better again. That's what. That's what we asking Trump. But the righteous Bring it out. is watching. Mm. The righteous. The, the, the righteous is waiting for this faithful day, and saying, "Uh oh, they getting their popcorns ready." And saying, "Okay, the the the, the most high done showed up. The most high is in, the, the most high is here." Mm. The real king is, is is making himself present. Yeah, he's making himself known to making all. Making all, you know what I'm saying? Because they can't do anything. Bring it Even out. Even if they put the virus out there, but you can't stop the spread of it. So the, this is for Israel. That's where your faith need to be and say, to get my. Let me get my damn faith back from the hands of my oppressor and give it back to the to his rightful owner. That's right. Who the it most belongs high. to. That's right. Right. You know what? Let me go and get that back from here. You go, Lord. <laughs> That's how you come out of here, my people. <laughs> so this is for the most high to just show you for those who straddling the fence, those who shaking in their faith. And the most high said, I'm going to show you this right here. This for you, Israel. This is for you to repent. I did this just for you. I put the whole world on punishment. The whole world is on punishment. Can't go outside. They, we on pause right now. You don't time out. Right. Go in the corner. No activity. No, no activity. <laughs> the most I put the whole world on punishment for you, Israel. And that's where your faith got to lie and say, you know what? I am significant. Right. I mm. am important. Right. The, the most I will stop the whole world just to get my attention. Yep. Mm. That's what the most I is trying to do. Get your attention. Say repent. Stop playing games. Stop. Get, get the idols out your heart. Mm. This world is doomed. It's going down. It is apex. Now it's on a dying slope. So what That's are you right. going to do? You're going you to try to be dedicated like a captain on the ship and say, I'm going down with it? I'm going down with Esau, my lover. We sick boss? No. Hell no. You sick boss on your own. <laughs> the most I want you, not me. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I got another savior. <laughs> you know, so you know what I mean? Oh, it, it was good while I lasted. You know what I mean? Sayonara. <laughs> Guess what? I repent. <laughs> oh, <praise> Bye. <laughs> hey, Cap, it's crazy you say that because when you really look at it, like like you brought out, can we have the NBA back? Can we have this back? We ain't had to hear nothing about no LGBT. The, Dwayne Wade, they was like, go home, Nick. Go home, Nick. And uh, 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 quarantine. <laughs> Shut up. We don't want to hear that. I ain't had to hear nothing about none of that. Right. You know, that's been a relief. I'm like, wow, I don't have to hear about no Dwayne Wade today. <laughs> right. None of that mm. foolishness that right. that was uh, caused your mind to be like, oh, I'm ready to go. Right, sure, so, sure. all hey, praise. I got this precept on um, uh, when you brought out the first precept you brought out is done for our learning things that happen right, before right. time. Let's read this real quick on uh, First Kings, First Kings seventeen, read twelve through fifteen real quick. Twelve. Go back 15. to that Peter's too. Yes, sir. Sorry about that, Cap. The Book of First Kings, chapter seventeen. Verses 12 through 15. Mm-hmm. And she said, As the Lord thy God liveth, I have not a cake, but a handful of meal in a barrel, and a little oil in a cruise. You, and see, be- you see, just like now. 
You, you see how the times are, are short, it's tightening up on a tortoise and, and things like that. That's what they're doing right now. Well, this lady was in the same predicament in her own household. You see what I'm saying? Come on. And behold, I am gathering two sticks that I may go in and dress it for me and my son that we may eat and die. And Elijah said unto her, Fear not, go and do as thou hast said, but make me thereof a little cake first, uh -huh. and bring it unto me, and after make for thee and for thy son. So now her faith had to kick in. Just like when we come on seven days a week bringing this word to our people, they faith had to kick in, regardless of what they see going on. Like, like the captain was just saying, let go, Esau. Let him go. That's right. Come on back to these scriptures. Come on back and listen to what the prophet's saying. The same thing this woman had to do. Listen to what the prophet's saying. And that's what, like on the inner Titanic. You remember they had to mm -hmm. let, let she she let um, Leonardo DiCaprio go. Right. He, he's he's gonna he's gonna sink. He, and <laughs> he he gonna disappear. He gonna be out of your mind. That's it. That's <laughs> it. Let him go if you want to live. And as well, also what you're bringing out is not the things we see. Right. What we because you know we see. Oh, I only have this. Right. But no, the most I have what right. you need. Right. You know what I'm saying? He, he right. have the rest for you. Exactly. That's where your faith kick in, exactly. like you're saying. Exactly. Come on. Verse 14, for thus saith the Lord God of Israel, the barrel of the me of meal shall not waste, neither shall the cruise of oil fail mm -hmm. until the day that the Lord sendeth rain upon the earth. Now, hold up. You mean to tell me when this coronavirus is over with that Israel not going to be lacking because we've got pantries all over our URC? You mean we ain't going to be lacking? That's what he's saying. Come on. Verse 15. And she went and did according to the saying of Elijah, and she and he and her house did eat many days. You see that? Because she obeyed the Lord's word. So she had to, her faith had to be built up. Okay, I'm going to listen to what the prophet is saying. Same thing we're trying to tell Israel. That's right. Listen to what the prophets are saying. You want verse right. 16? Oh, because That's exactly. Because it, it, when you read it, in verse 2, she said, what, we, I only have enough for me and my son. He said, no, make me the cakes. Then make it for you and your son. And then you read in the verse you just read, I also just read, it said they had uh, many, days. many days. That's right. So that's, I'm telling you, faith is real. It got to be built up. That's why it's going to take you repenting, coming into the schools, coming into the, the body to start to what? Get built up, mm -hmm. to strengthen your faith, you know? I was going to say, verse 16, say exactly what you just said. And the barrel of meal wasted not, neither did the cruise of oil fail, according to the word of the Lord, which he spake by Elijah. That's the prophets. Mm. Well, this is it. Us prophets. Yes, sir. That's back on the earth as aforetime is telling you, trust in the most high. Repent. Start keeping these commandments because the end is near, Israel. Mm. You, go have, you got only two sides you go be on. The winning side or the losing side. You know, just like Cap said, let it go. Let them go. Let the mindset go. All right? Uh, go back to Peter's and finish that right quick. Uh, 17, you can start at 18. It's the book of First Peter's chapter 4 and verse 17. Verse 18. And if the righteous scarcely be saved, where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? Wherefore, let them that suffer according to the will of God commit the keeping of their souls to him in well-doing as unto a faithful creator. To a faithful creator. He said, so as Cap brought out as well, the scripture just said, scarcely be saved. Through everything that's going on, your faith and trust have to be in the most high because everybody not going to make it of Israel. All right? Two-thirds of us have to do what? Got to die. All mm -hmm. right? Thus said the Lord. Not my words, but his. And understanding these times and things that we're going through are trying our faith to build us up for more affliction to come. This is just like the uh, beginning of stages of things. All right. And that bottom part said, wherefore, let them that suffer according to the will of God. We suffering according to the will of God. It's his will that we go through these trials and afflictions to do what? Build our faith. It's also brought out in Sirach, too. There's so many precepts that just correlate with this to show you that our forefathers, that's what the Most High looking for. He's looking for faithful men and women that's going to go through the affliction, all right, that's going to go through the trials and tribulations and things that's going to present themselves in today's day and age, all right? 
Yes, sir. On that verse 18, it's heavy. It say, and if the righteous scarcely be saved, where should the ungodly and the sinner appear? So they let you know two different individuals. So the righteous, they're going to be, they're going to barely make it. Why? That's, it goes back to Isaiah. To all your righteousness ain't nothing but filthy rags to the most high. That's showing you that we cannot be puffed up. We can't have pride. Even in our all our righteousness, we still must have humility. We still have to present ourselves as a minister to Israel. And it talks about where should the ungodly in the center appear? So that busts your, your, your bubble or myth, you know, a myth buster to the, what the Christianity say, right, right, right. that God hate the sin but love the sinner. Wherever the sinner at and the ungodly, I don't want to be there. That's right. <laughs> For real. So it's giving you a distinction that the righteous, with all his righteous deed, he barely going to make it. He make it worse. Salvation. And where should the ungodly, those who not keeping God's laws, a sinner is like once again, we always say a crime, a criminal. That mean, a criminal means he's transgressed some type of um, crime of the, of the law of the land. So therefore, a sinner, that means he broke the laws and the commandments of God. So ungodly mean you been contrary to what God told you to do. You've been the opposite. You've been an adversary to God. That means, therefore, God is on the right-hand side. You somewhere going for left. Just to paint the picture for you. And then if you're not with God, then what? It say what sinners, where they appear. It ain't good. Right. These are the things to where you got to set your faith at to, to, to set your uh, uh, your category. Right. And I'm going to be on God's side to endure all suffering and affliction. Right. Or I'm going to be on the sinner or the ungodly side to say I gave up and I lost faith. And I let, I just went according to what everybody else. I followed the herd. I put my, mm. se- I my followed the multitude and my security in, in man. In man. I made man my own. That's right. That's where the ungodly and the sinner is going to lie. Those who did not have faith in the Most High. Didn't trust the Most High game plan. That's right. That's right. Hey, real quick, yeah. Real quick, I just want to point, make a point out. Because what y'all saying is, is, is so heavy. And the Most High is a mastermind. What y'all are talking about here, about uh, Israel and where their faith is lying. But if you look, the, the Most High is making it to the point of where you have no choice but to turn back to him. And the reason why I say that is because all these areas where unrepented Israel puts their trust in man, in the system, in the government, in another nation, all of these things are being affected by this so-called COVID, well, not so-called, but by this COVID-19 to the point where the Most High is showing you there is nowhere that you can run that he can't touch them. Everything that you had trust in, like you said, our people are trusting in the government. We're waiting on uh, stimulus checks. We're waiting on funding. We're, yeah, yeah, looking for bailouts, grants, everything. Like you said, open back up the club so we can have some, some sinful relief. The Most High has shut everything down to the point of where your faith, you, you are now sitting there looking like, okay, what am I going to do? Where am I going to go? The Most High is showing you right there. You have no choice but to turn back to him. You know what also the Most High is doing? Um, officer, he's removing that gray area, that lukewarm area. Yes, sir. Either yes, you sir. do or you don't. Yes, sir. That's what mm-hmm. the Most High want right now. The true service stand. The, the true servants of God stand up. Mm-hmm. Everybody who planned and pretending and being lukewarm, you, because you have an option. Mm-hmm. You have mm-hmm. the option. You know what I mean to to get it right or continue in your wickedness mm-hmm. and just go down with everything else. So the Most High is removing that gray area to say that I trust in the Lord to because the, out of the abundance of your the abundance of your heart the mouth gonna speak. So everything that people are seeing on the news in your job and around you in your neighborhood at the grocery stores they showing you where their heart is and it's not on the Most High. But when you look at us, you know, and we just sitting back smiling like it's a normal day, dead or alive, I'm serving the Most High. That's right, That's right. Dead or alive. You know what I'm saying? It's a good thing. Either the most I can treat me like the um um uh, Meshach and Abednego, he can come and save me out the furnace, right. or he can, or I can be like the um the, the um the um the mother with the seven sons, mm. and and get burnt up. Right, right, you know what I mean? Right. Get caught up in the pest. I don't care. You know what I'm saying? But guess what they said? We will come back. That's right. That's right. We that's will right. be back. And that's a beautiful thing that we had this word. How many of our people died not knowing the word, not knowing the true understanding? Not knowing who they were. 
But if we die right now, we know what we're doing. Mm. You should be, your conscience is clear. You, you good. Basically. That's right. That's why I say, no, the truth and the truth will set you free. Right. It's because at the end of the day, I know it's not of man, it's of the Lord. And guess what? Right. I'm willing to do the will of the Lord, dead or alive. Healthy, um, sick or unhealthy. Healthy. Mm-hmm. But you know, Cap, you the things that you bringing out, that's the most high's MO. He told us in Deuteronomy 8 that he took us through the wilderness to humble us, to, to show us what was in us. So that when we got ready to go into the land, we like, I can't do this no more. I can't do that no more. Right. And our for our forefathers before us failed. That's what Paul brought out. He said they tempted Christ in the wilderness. But then when Paul, what, what you, when you were saying what you were saying about the sufferings and things that our people are going through right now, I was thinking about Romans 8 and 18 where it says, For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Because all these things that we're going through, the things that the leadership, the deacons have been bringing out about how Esau is hurting the earth, how he's destroying it. This, the Lord is mad. The Lord is is ticked off, right. and he's bringing vengeance because of all the things that they've done. Our people That's are, right. oh, what's going to happen now? We've lived through bloodshed, murder, rape, robbery, and they consistently doing these things on the earth. And now, now the Lord is coming to deliver us, and our people are, are afraid <laughs> because what? We don't... We, they don't have that faith, uh, like Deacon uh, Deacon's bringing out. They don't have that faith to see past next week or right, see right. past next the next day. Right, you what's know? in front of them? Basically. Yes, sir. Basically, so uh, let's start going through some of the 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 faithful of the Most High. You know what I'm saying? Because he in our generations is found faithful men and women as well. You know what I'm saying? Of Israel that's going to stand on the Most High and trust in Him to deliver them. All right, that's what's going to deliver us. You know, uh, let's go to Numbers 12 and 7. We go touch on Moses first because, you know, we know Moses was found faithful. He delivered us, huh? Oh, Numbers 12 and 7. 12 and 7? Yeah, yes, sir. This is the book of Numbers, chapter 12 and verse 7. My servant Moses is not so, who is faithful in all mine house. So, it's going into Miriam and, and Aaron trying to, of course, compare themselves or put them on the same uh, playing field as Moses. And the most I say, no, Moses is faithful. Faithful, going back to the attributes of faithful, strict or thorough in the performance of duties, vows, one's word, promises, so on and so forth. This was Moses. What the most High told him to do, he did it. OK, um, so he was faithful in all the house of the Most High. Go to Hebrews 11 and 1. All right. Hebrews 11 and 1. We go, go through some of our forefathers and the attributes in which faithfulness takes place. All right. This is the book of Hebrews, chapter 11 and verse 1. Mm-hmm. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. So this was also Michael quoted earlier. You have to see past what's in front of you, basically. Our forefathers, when you read this chapter, saw what was saw what was in past what was in front of them. Okay? They looked to the most high to make the way. They leaned on him. They trusted in him. Their faith was in him. Okay? Keep reading. For for by it. The elders obtained a good report. So for it said, for by it, trusting, faith in the most high, the elders obtained a good report because they did what? They followed the most high's word, his command. All right, jump to verse six. Verse six. Mm-hmm. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. So that faith that we're touching on today is very, very important. Without it, you don't have a God to worship. Or have faith in, or trust in, or believe in, or hold to his word. Because as we've been reading, he's faithful to his word. He's been true to his word, but have we been true to our word? Okay, keep reading. For he that cometh to God mm-hmm. must believe that he is, mm-hmm. and that he is a rewarder of them 
that diligently seek him. You see that? That's putting your faith and trust in some, as, as the scriptures talk about, we haven't seen the most high God. We do see a depiction of him in the Bible. But it says what? We see our brothers face to face and we hate what we see. But that's why faith lies that we have to believe and understand and know through reading the scriptures there is a more a powerful being. And that's the most high. That will, if you trust and diligently seek him, to not believe in the fairy tales and as today, uh, Easter bunnies and rabbits and all this foolishness, but to really seek him through what? The Bible to find out where do where is my place in this earth? Okay? Who am I, basically? What is my purpose on earth? That's you diligently seeking him to figure out what's my purpose, what's my duties, what is my course of action on this earth. All right? Keep reading. Verse 7. Mm -hmm. By faith, Noah, being warned of God, of things not seen as yet. So that's why I said faith is the substance of things hoped for, the things not seen. Noah, that rain that came, they ain't never saw nothing like that before. But they, right. his faith and his family as well, the eight that made it through, they knew their faith was in the most high. That's where they put their trust. All right. Keep reading. Moved with fear, prepared an ark to, to the saving of his house. That, that part right there, moved with fear. As we bring out the whole class, fear. Fear is a is a is a a good attribute. Well, let me say that. Fear can make you do something or make you not do something, basically. That's right. All right. Their fear was in the most high. He said, I'm going to fear the most high and do what? Build this ark. Bring it out. But you got everybody else around were looking at him like, what the? What are you doing? Why are you building this big A boat? You know, like, what's what? But we go see that, Mo, uh, that uh, Noah was a preacher of righteousness. All right. Keep reading. Moved with fear, mm -hmm. prepared an ark to the saving of his house, mm -hmm. by the which he condemned the world mm -hmm. and, and became heir of the righteousness which is by faith. Heir to the righteousness which is by faith. It said he condemned the world. Why? Because the world didn't want to listen to what Abraham was teaching. I mean, I'm sorry, Noah was teaching. That's right. All right? As today. Bring it up to today. Our people don't want to hear this word. They don't want to hear that you're supposed to be applying the, the dietary law today, not marrying the other nations, you know, not serving all these pagan days that we serve today. They don't want to hear that. That that it it the ears start to bleed when they hear those things. As the same as our forefathers in the day, they didn't want to hear what Noah was talking about mm -hmm. at all. All right. That's why Ezekiel said they stopped with their ears and That's closed it. their Put their hand they don't want to hear it. Right, right. Hey, hey Kat, real quick. It's just like uh like back in the day when you read when you read about Noah, it said they looked at him like he was strange. Right, right. You know, I'm okay, you building an ark off of faith. Oh, what's wrong with you? Why you doing that? Right. It's the same way they look at us today. Right. right. Why why you wearing fringes? Why you got a beard? Why why you don't eat pork? Mm -hmm. It's the same look. And the world was condemned. Why? Because they was in the midst of sin. Mm. Right. The most I had to yes, come sir. and purge this whole earth. Just like right. he go do with that fire. Right. All right. He go right. He go purge the earth. All right. So hey, go Cap. to Genesis six and five hey, right hey. quick. Do you know why they don't understand, Cap? Why? Just also with with um what the office just brought out. They don't understand what it takes to be a servant of God. To whom much is given, much is required. Right. A lot of people won't require a lot but not giving giving enough of themselves right. not changing that's why they hate when you tell them about this bible the correct way because their conscience tell their spirit tells them that you want me to change my way of life man i, I done did i done found a way in this world i done got an education i i don't have no criminal record you know i don't have children everywhere i have a degree now I have a, I make sixty thousand dollars a year, and um, I come from poverty. I come from broken homes. You know what I'm saying? I, I I come from a life that tells me I'm I'm nobody. I'm I'm insignificant. You know I'm inferior. 
now that I finally got a job mm-hmm. and, and making money in a house and a group of friends, which are the other nations? And you about to tell me I I didn't work my bust my <laughs> For for twenty some for twenty something years, you sacrifice to get here. Sacrifice to get here, and now you finna tell me that's the wrong way, boy. You crazy? <laughs> oh, man. I gotta get this up. I gotta give Billy and Bobby and right. Joey that we right. go watch Super Bowl party and stuff right. on. No, are you serious, bro? I, I went my whole life without having sex. Now I got the money. I'm finna have sex every day. <laughs> All the different women. <laughs> you know how many bad females at my job? Right. They, I'm a supervisor now. They do everything I say. And you telling me one, I have to not fornicate? One wife? They, they, I can't have threesomes? They, they say that's your interpretation. Yeah, man. Mm. Come on, man. Uh, hey, um, I, I put, I put, you know, hey, man, hey, I, I put, uh, um, I put God on a rain check. But this is to show you, you think it's a joke, but this is what our people are plagued with. That's when you right, talking right. to them about this truth, they, trust me, they count the cost what you're saying. They know that when it comes to serving the Lord, how they're supposed to serve him, they know it's going to take dedication and sacrifices. The same sacrifice it took them to get where they're at right now, that they making it, they're making it hard for them to, to change and, and, and switch gears to this truth, they understand that. They say, you know what, if I had the, you know, the, the same dedication it took me to get here, I'm going to have to have the same dedication to come serve the Lord. So I'm not willing to do that until what? A major virus come. That's what we talk about. That's that straddling the fence to where, I, even when I was in Christianity, I was like, man, we're not living up how they live up to this Bible. Mm-hmm. We're not doing the same thing that they do in this Bible. <laughs> because you cannot tell me God is all love and th- right. the whole world love God when they killed the prophets, right. when they spoke the truth. Nah, I, it, it ain't true. Right. I, I, I don't understand it. I don't understand it, but like you said, it doesn't add up. Right, I don't right, get it. Right, right, right. Hmm. So that's why when that word come, it's like a breath of fresh air. Because you know what? It hits you in the spirit what you already was thinking. That's right. But guess what? A lot of people cover that up. You know what I'm saying? And they substitute that with the curse of this world. That's right. And that's right. what they say. They Do I want to serve the Lord, the God that I can't see? Or worship the material things that I can't see? Um, here we go right here. Um, um, 1 Peter 4 and 2. I just, just thought it. Uh, yeah, just thought it too. First two, Cap. Yeah, I want to start at 1, but start at 2. This is the book of 1 Peter chapter 4 and verse 2. But start at 1. Verse 1. For as much then as Christ hath suffered for us in the flesh. Nobody's not going to get the kingdom without suffering. That's right. That's right. Nobody's getting the kingdom because the most I gave it to you were Adam and Eve. And he said, now you have to work to get the kingdom. Through much tribulation, you got to go to get the kingdom of heaven. That's right. Bring it up. So if you if you ain't preparing your mind to suffer, you don't have the faith. And you and you know now what you teach. Go ahead. For as much then as Christ had suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves likewise with the same mind. Get your faith up. Gird up your lawns. Be prepared, if if anything, because you don't know your purpose on this earth. Everybody talking about Moses, talking about Moses had a a, 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 a heathen woman, which you was going to, and um, number 12. Are you willing to die before the promise? Or are you willing to put all the work in and not get the, the, the land of milk and honey? But your faith is say, you know what, I'm putting the work, and if I don't get the land of, the, the, the land of milk and honey, the Mosiah is just and faithful to bring me back. And I'm going to do all my hard work, I'm going to get the kingdom. So these are the things you got to have your mind set on. Because a lot of brothers just like, man, I put all this work in, and then a brother just so all of a sudden, you know, he gets sick or something like that, and he leaves and be like, man, that was wrong. Is, is God unjust? No, he, he just. That's why he said the dead in Christ shall rise first. Right. So, therefore, you don't know your purpose on what the Most High is using you for. So that's why you got to make the best at what you do. Right. And, and then the prophets told you, I finished my course. Right. That's right. right. Like the most I have all of us here for a purpose and a time and a season. All right. We don't know when. Right. But when it's fulfilled, it's fulfilled. Right. And you that's know? when your faith kick in because you got, you're doing your course by faith. Right. right. Because you still have that Esau system set up in your head that 
I'm gonna put all this work in in six to five and retire. Right. A lot of us ain't gonna make it to sixty. You know what I'm saying? Right, 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 right. I was ain't gonna make it that time. You know, so you just gotta say, let me do your will, oh Lord, yeah. and let me be sufficient. Right. And whatever temptation and and, and, and perilous, perilous times come my way, let me be able to endure. That's right. Go ahead. So if you wanna be Christ like He's telling you, Christ suffered. And for for he that had suffered in the flesh had ceased from sin. Right. So that's what you got to do. No matter what you're going through in life, you cannot sin. Everything that Christ went through, he had no gal in his mouth. Not even he didn't do it. action. He didn't even say it. You see how powerful that is? How many times we speak from like even the scriptures had to give you a, 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 a way out. A lot of people slip from the mouth, but not from the heart. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Christ didn't even slip from the heart. I mean, he didn't slip from the mouth. No gal was in his mouth. Go ahead. Because he had faith. He already knew his purpose on earth is to let his light shine. And through his examples, they're going to glorify the Father in heaven. Go Verse ahead. 2, that he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh to the lust of men, but to the will of God. Right. So, therefore, you cannot, Israel, you can't, I can't wait till the economy get back on, uh, up and running so I can start going back into foolishness. This right, right here mm. is, a, is a reset button opportunity to, to for you to clear your agenda right. of, of the world and yeah. say, you know what? Let me fill my agenda with the will of the Most High. That's right. It's time to clean house. To all clean that house. clutter that you had, time to take all that foolishness out your mind and not fill it in with the Bible. That's it. Go ahead. Verse 3. For the time past of our life may suffice us to have wrought the will of the Gentiles when we walked in lasciviousness Lust, excess of wine, revelings, banquetings, and abominable idolatries. This is what people saying. Let the world get back to. Mm. Basically, right. let the world get back to its wickedness and doing the will of the Gentiles. Mm. What the world deems successful. Right. What the world deems is holy, but not the will of the Father. So, but guess what? Here, here you come, Israel. Go ahead. Verse 4, wherein they think it strange that ye run not with them to the ex same excess of riot, speaking evil of you. You see that? They spoke evil of Noah because Noah was preparing something that they wasn't, they, they didn't have on their day-to-day -day agenda. Right, that's right. They have partying, sex and riding, drinking, sexual lust, making music about right. Orgies and killing right, and right. selling drugs, popping pills. So when you tell them to be sober minded and gird up your lawns, they like, what are you talking about? You say gird up your lawns, prepare for the day of the Lord. They, what are you talking about? This dude is strange. Right. Mm. You're not from where we come from. So now they alienate you, the men of the Lord. That's right. But guess what? The most I set the men of the Lord to be your aid. That's all I want just to touch on. That's, so that's why they laughed and that's why they looked at Noah strange because their mind was filled up with that. That's right. Of the wills of the Gentiles. Of the, the world, like you say, Cap. That's on point. Um, read, read uh, Stan Peters, read 2 Peters 2 and 5. And then we'll go to Genesis. 2 Peters 2 and 5. We're going to read 5 through 8. Because what you're saying, Cap, is every, basically the world was having a good time. While Noah was following the actions and the voice and the, the words of God. Kids made fun of him. Right. Ignorant people made fun of him. He over the building. It ain't even rain yet. Right. What are you right. building? He crazy, man. He's he crazy. About rain the flood. What? That old fool. <laughs> and that's, that's, you just take it back to from then to now. That's never happened on the earth. Mm. In our lifetime to see what we see today. I'm saying the pestilence that's going out. All the countries have shut down. You know what I'm saying? Like, this is crazy. Like, to our generation, everybody here, we never saw nothing like this. Right. But still, with that being said, you know, we still have to stand on faith. You know, that's right. why he said, come out of her, my people. We're conditioning our minds. We ain't never seen a nuke hit nowhere before. Right. right. So we, by faith, we're saying, you know what? It is going to happen. So we got to gird up our lawns and keep his commandments. That's right. That's right. They don't have them nuclear uh, bombs for no reason. That's right. And those things do have an expiration date, so they do have to be used. <laughs> I, hey, I'm just, I'm being odd. I'm serious. Oh, they have an expiration date, so they have to be used. Right. Yes, sir. Yeah. Right. Hey, Cal, I want to come in on something you said earlier. You said, you know, Israel is waiting for uh, the world to go back to the way it was before the plague. Right. 
And a lot of Israel doesn't understand that it's not going back to the way that it was before the plague. It's never gonna go back. Yeah, it's never gonna go back. A lot, of, uh, some of us. Yeah, Deacon said last night. We uh, cap just ref, uh, reference it. We mm-hmm. going on. We for the going to decline. Yeah, bro. yeah, yeah. We we Everything. going into the next phase. You, you, you know that's like telling. You know you know that's like saying officer. What's that? That's like telling a woman who's been going through the world carefree and she got raped and telling her to go back to her normal life. Mm. Wow. Yeah, ain't gonna happen. That's it. It's never. She never gonna go back. Mm. Her mind is her mind is is corrupted. That's right. You know her, that 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 carefree thought. You know what I mean? Just uh, um, tipping through the tip, the tulips. You know what I'm saying? Tulips. In that everybody love, everybody is free, and things like that. That is that 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 pure mind is gone. It been contaminated. That's Once right. a seal been popped open, you can never say it's brand new. That's right. Even the, even the people that's on the news, the top doctors, that Anthony Fauci, he said we not going back to the way things were. Right. Oh, it ne- it'll that. never go they back to that. the way things were. Right. So. Even the even the enemy know that. That's right. <laughs> Second Peter chapter two and verse five, and spared not the old world, but saved Noah, the eighth person, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly. Let's come on back to the, we brought out not too long ago the ungodly, the sinners. Noah was teaching them, showing them, okay, you got to do this. This is what's for to happen. I'm preparing you for what's about to happen as the scripture's preparing us today. That's why, like Cap said, we we chilling. We not up in arms and running and uh, going crazy right now. Why? Because we trusting in the most high, our faith in the most high. Through our forefathers and through these scriptures, he's told us what's to come. So we secure in our thoughts. You understand? Go ahead. Verse 6. And turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, Condemn them with an overthrow, making them an ensample unto those that after should live ungodly. See that? It keep going back to the ungodly. It keep going back to those that are not what? Keeping the commandments. Mm. That's putting faith and trust in men. It's a time that's coming, Israel, where these men were saved. That's what salvation is, Christians, Okay. Salvation is being saved from the destruction to come. Like Cap just said, if we don't see it, meaning we to die in, in this captivity or whatever the case may be, we still going to be saved to the kingdom that's coming. That Christ is going to set up heaven on earth. Okay? So keep reading. As, as, as it going into Lot, Lot and his family were saved, but then you had his wife that had that what? That doubt. Mm. That had... Um, Lack of the securement, the fear, <laughs> and securement of what? What was back there in Sodom and Gomorrah? The things she had, whatever it was, caused her to look back. And the angels and her husband gave the order, don't look back. That's like being comfortable and content in this world. That's she was right. comfortable and content back then. Right. Mm. God right. saying, you, you, you can't be comfortable and content right. in this oppression. Right. You know, That's come right. out of it. That's right. That's right. Keep reading. And delivered just Lot, mm-hmm. vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked. And this, this should be vexing you all day, every day. You know what I'm saying? We know what that situation is talking about, what? this, uh, Them going against the scriptures, them in homosexuality, all these different things. And today, with everything that we're hearing, it should vex you. Because, again, going back to the fear, man is putting fear in our people. We don't have fear of God. That's vexing to me, you know. But like Deacon was bringing out yesterday, looking at the the the, the chariots and things of that nature, the IFO, that's a blessing. That's a that's a put a smile on your face, right? Because you know that's true according to the scripture. You know that those Help. things are gonna happen. Help is on the way. Help is on the way. Mm-hmm. That's it, Cap. You know what I'm saying? So you're not scared. You're not fearful. Okay, keep reading. Verse eight. Mm-hmm. For that righteous man dwelling among them, in seeing and hearing. Vex his righteous soul from day to day with their unlawful deeds. Right. So these things that America is doing, as officer said, you got to come out of it. You can't trust in these things. You can't trust in man. All right. So let's go to Genesis 6 and 5. Genesis 6 and 5. So Noah, Lot, they had faith. They were faithful to the most high. They put their trust in the most high. They were found righteous in their deeds. That's you got, as Cap said, you got to ask yourself, where are you going to be found? 
throughout everything that's going on throughout this earth, where would you be found right now if Christ came back? If he came back right now, where would you be? What side would you be on? Wait on the stimulus package. <laughs> stimulus check. <laughs> right, right. Waiting on the stimulus check. You know, that, that ain't going to benefit you when, when everything burnt up. Hey, Cal, real quick, right before you grab that, that, that next precept, mm-hmm. I just want to I just want to kind of ask the Christians a question. Mm-hmm. When I say ask the Christians, for you. For you so they watching, right? Yeah, I, I hope they watching. Yeah, I'll I hope they watching. It's just a question for you right. because we just read. We just read the the example given to us from the Most High about Sodom and Gomorrah. We know it was destroyed for like what homosexuality, lesbianism, idolatry, stuff that they was doing. The Most High ran in a race of marriage. Yes, yes, in a race of marriage. The Most High ran fire down and destroyed the cities. Now I know. I mean, I've been in Christianity. We've all been in Christianity, and we all know that one saying that they always say: God don't change. God don't change. Well, here it is. We just read that God destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah for all this wickedness, and he doesn't change. My question is to you Christians, what do you think is going to happen if you are found in homosexuality, lesbianism, idolatry, interracial marriage, going against the scriptures when God comes back? He doesn't change. He gave you an example of what's going to happen. He gave you an example of what he did to those that did it before you. So what's going to happen when he comes back and you're caught up in the midst of this? And, and to add to that question, and the people that were destroyed in Solomon and Gomorrah, the time of Noah, do you think do you think they felt that they was wicked? Hmm. Do you think that they think they was unholy? Right. Hmm. Do you think that they wasn't they they thought they wasn't serving the Lord? Right. Hmm. Do you not think that they say I have a good relationship with God? Right. Hmm. God knows my heart. Right. They had to go somewhere and worship. That's right. Mm-hmm. They had to go somewhere that was so, so, so supposed to be spiritual. Mm-hmm. But guess what? They all drowned. They all got burnt up. That's right. And you, you, even Lot's wife, she knew there was a God. Right. Because her husband. Pretty much. So therefore, then you know. Well, Lot, Lot's wife was special because here it is. You got, oh, oh no, I'm serious. She was special. You got moved by the hands of the angels out of the city, and yet you still did not have faith. You turned around and looked back after you received instructions. That's that's gonna be a lot of our people. That's oh why Christ God. referenced it again in the New Testament. That's gonna be some of y'all. You know what I'm saying? You know that's why your prayer and fasting and faith in the Most High to gird you up in that time as well. You know what I'm saying? Because your faith, your faith has to be strong. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like we, I know me and Cap talk about it, but like you, don't, we don't know how the Most High gonna take us out of here. Right. That's true. You know what I'm saying? You could be sleeping in your bed. Right. We make him get persecuted, thrown in jail. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like like John, like like beheaded, like like uh was it John? Uh, James? Who was it? Beheaded. John. Yeah. Beheaded. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's like you we don't know. So that's why you praying and, and asking the most high to gird you up, make strengthen your faith to know and understand whatever you put me through, Father, let me be strong enough to endure that thing. Right. Just like he touched about the seven sons, you right. know. I wanted to pick it back up what Karazadar just made mention of, of Lot's wife was able by the hand of the angels to escape. He said that example again in, uh, was that Zechariah, where he said the two-thirds going to come out when he going to bring them? No, I'm sorry. It's in uh, Ezekiel, I believe, when he said that he going to bring the rebels along with him. So they got right there. But what happened? A lack of faith. They didn't want to change their mindset. So they got out just like Lot's wife did. Right, right. Yep. And that's what's going to happen in the Wilderson. Yeah, Ezekiel 20, right. That's what's going to happen again. Because our people, you know, it, we, it's like we always have to have an example, huh? Right. He correct them in their face. <laughs> right. In their face. Christ. Face to face. Yep. Yeah. Bro, you know how. you, <laughs> Bro, I, I, I don't even want to imagine that. Right, yeah. I don't either. The most. <laughs> Go. <laughs> Oh, man. Read that right quick. Read that right quick. Uh, the book of Genesis, chapter 6 and verse 5. And God saw that the man, the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. You see, that, that every time they get us in trouble, your own vain thoughts and opinions and everything else. Bring it out. Continually. That means it, it, it's been going on for a long time. I'm gonna do it this way. That work. I'm gonna do it this way. Right. Don't work. Right. I'm gonna do it this way. Don't right. work. I'm gonna keep doing it. Continuously. It don't stop. Right. Continuously. 
all the way up to today. We still doing the same thing. All right. Hey, Cap, they didn't have Facebook or YouTube None or TV right. or DVDs and all that back in either. Right. And it was continually. So they said so they, they had to research their wickedness. <laughs> They couldn't even just go on YouTube and just say, oh, it's accident. It's a thumbnail. What is that? Right, you know right, what right. Yeah, yeah. You see what that is. Yeah, for real. They had to go search out for the wickedness. You right, know what I'm saying? Right. This is the way I should go. Right. <laughs> and some of them was creating some wickedness. That's right. That's right. Through their own wicked inventions. Yes, sir. Uh, keep reading. Verse 6. Mm -hmm. And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth, mm -hmm. and it grieved him at his heart. Mm -hmm. And the Lord said, I would destroy man. Whom I have created from the face of the earth, mm -hmm. both man and beast, and the creeping thing, and the fowls of the air, for it repented me that I have made them. Mm -hmm. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Keep, Keep reading. reading. All right. Verse. Well, uh, that's that grace, you know, Noah found grace. We yes, sir. found righteous. As Lord willing, we be found righteous to have that grace that Christ has bestowed upon us to be able to repent. Okay, keep going. These are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just man and perfect in his generations. Mm -hmm. And Noah walked with God. And Noah begat three sons. Shem. Oh, that's it. Ham. So it says, and Noah walked with God. That means Noah obeyed God. Noah did what the Most High instructed him to do. Jump to verse 22. Verse 22, mm -hmm. thus did Noah, according to all that God commanded him, so did he. You see that? Everything the Most High commanded him, he did. That's how him and his, and, and his sons and their wives were saved and then replenished the earth. All right? So from there, let's go to uh, Hebrews, back to Hebrews 11. Hebrews 11. Eleven in verse twenty-three. It's the book of Hebrews, chapter eleven, and verse twenty-three. Mm -hmm. By faith, Moses, when he was born, was hid three months of his parents because they saw he was a proper child. So and they Moses. Were, now we're speaking on Moses again. We're going into faithful men in the time of affliction. All right, these men were found faithful to be delivered out of and. Deliver their people as well. That's what we're doing. We're trying to deliver you through preaching the righteousness and gospel, this good news of the Bible to you, to showing you it's a way out of this, this hell we're living in, this oppression we're living in. It's for you to repent, turn back to God, obey his word, the law, statutes, and commandments, and the faith of Christ. This, this, it sounds easy, but it's not. It's hard for our people. As Cap said, to come out of the mindset and the, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? The routine of sin. Okay, keep reading. And they were not afraid of the king's commandment. Mm -hmm. By faith, Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. So Moses. Moses said, I'm not following what I've been taught. I'm not going to stay with the norm. That's what we're telling our people today. Don't follow the wicked, the ungodly that are among us, that have taught us, basically. All right? Don't follow their ways. Let's follow and trust in God. Okay? Hold that. Go to uh, Numbers 12 and 7. We're going to trust in the Most High. All right? The book of Numbers, mm -hmm. chapter 12 and verse 7. Mm -hmm. My servant Moses is not so, mm -hmm. who is faithful in all mine house. So Moses was faithful in all the Most High's house, meaning he did what the Most High say to do. And then he did what? He fled out of what? Egypt. Because he had a job to do. All right. What was his job? Um, go to, what I want, 7? Uh, Exodus 7. I think that's what I want. Oh, uh, three. I'm sorry. Let me see. Nope, three. Yeah. Yeah, Exodus 3 and verse, uh, verse uh, 5. It's the book of Exodus chapter 3 and verse 5. Mm -hmm. And he said, draw not, now, 
Draw not nigh hither. Put off thy shoes from thy feet. From off thy feet. For the place whereon thou standest is holy ground. So he told Moses, because it's the burning bush and so forth and so forth. And he's speaking to him. Christ is speaking to him and telling him to take off his shoes. All right. As we read in what's Ecclesiastes 5, right? Talks about what? It's basically going to the philosophy, the things that you've been taught. Remember, Moses was second in command. You know, he learned the ways of Egypt. All right. He told him to leave all that behind. All right. I don't want to hear any of those things. I want you to come and serve me faithful and true. All right. Because I have a mission for you, Moses. All right. Go ahead. Verse six. Verse six. Moreover, he said, I am the God of thy father, mm -hmm. the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look upon God. Mm -hmm. So and the Lord, the most. Christ told him that what? I'm the God of the fa your fathers. All right? Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. Refreshing his memory. All right? I have a job for you, Moses. Go ahead. Verse 7. Mm -hmm. And the Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people which are in Egypt. So the Most High in Christ understands the affliction we're going through here in America, in Babylon. That's why I say everything written four times was written for our learning. We understand all these things that our forefather went through, we're going through today. All right? Just like this spiritual Egypt. All right? They went through the afflictions. We're going through the afflictions. All right? The most I see this, and he sent a savior, Moses, to deliver them out of this, that captivity. As well, he goes send Christ to deliver us what? Out of this captivity. But we have to have faith. Be patient. Hold fast to the most high in his word because he's faithful and true to his word as we have to have faith and trust in his word. All right. Keep reading. Finish that. And have heard their cry by reason of their taskmasters, for I know their sorrows. Mm -hmm. So the most high know our sorrows. So go to Hebrews 11 to 24. Just continue reading that. Verse 24. Mm -hmm. By faith. My apologies. Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 24. Uh -huh. By faith, Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. That's going exactly back to what Cap was going into. Our people don't want to go through no type of affliction. They want to live in the pleasures of this world. Like you gave an example, Cap. I done went to school for 10 years or five years or whatever. I got this degree, that degree. I done made, yeah, this much money in, in my savings, my 401k. I reached this pinnacle in life. Thus said Esau. Thus said America. All right? The American dream, right? right. I can't give that up. You know what a perfect example, Cap? Mm -hmm. you, everybody who have that ideology or that mindset, you should go read. Uh, Matthews 19 and see the, see if you have that same spirit of that rich man that Christ encountered. Right, right. That's right. That's right. Yeah, go read the thing. What would you do? Right. That's another question, huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. What would you do? Yeah. Um, <laughs> that's funny. Okay, keep reading. Verse 26. Mm -hmm. Esteeming the reproach of Christ, mm -hmm. greater riches than the treasures in Egypt. So that's showing you right there. The reproach, the hate. the Because we go get hate. We get hate today. We go continue to get hate. But we go stand on the Most High in Christ and these commandments and knowing our nationality, knowing what the Most High, the order in which he told us to stand and go, the path to walk, all right? That's greater riches than these riches here because as you read in the Scriptures, we can't take none of this stuff with us. As the Scriptures say in Daniel uh, 7, this the kingdom that's coming it's going to be forever, ever. This here, it's going to be done away with. Never to rise again. Everybody in this earth going to be keeping the commandments. Or you got a judgment to pay. All right? Mm. You for the system? Hey, yeah. Oh. Um, Go ahead, okay. It's a then, um, verse 25. It's a den to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. 
everything that you invest in your life in right now is only for a small season. And we understand what our people are up against and the pleasures and the satisfaction that they have to um, sacrifice to keep these commandments. Right. That's why they call it a sacrifice. You understand? Just like you want to be a doctor, you have to sacrifice your college joy. You know what I'm saying? Right. The, the best much. days of people's life. You right. know what I'm saying? Of some people's life right. is the college and the partying and the having fun, the football games. And a lot of times when you want to be a doctor or try to have something that's major that you're going for, you have to sacrifice that. You know, and you know how, you know what I mean, trouble that can be. And us as Israelites and has repented and turned uh, um, a new leaf, you know what I mean, in a, a new outlet and uh, a new um, direction. Right, right. And saying, I'm going to give all this up to start to keep the commandments of God. That some of, that was difficult. A lot of us had to pray and fast and That's right, right. heavy on that. Right, right. Because guess what? A lot of us have degrees. A lot of us had uh, um, uh, um, careers or jobs or entrepreneurs at tattoo artists, right, right. barbers, barbers. You know right, what I'm saying? Right, right. We're making a lot, a gang of money, cutting hair on Saturday on a Sabbath, and they have to sacrifice that. Right. Do I want to enjoy the pleasures of sin and breaking God's laws, right. or say to hell with it? I'm gonna live a, a, a humbling life and be rewarded at the end. Right. A content life. That it's is. hard to do that with a microwave dinner mentality. Right. Very much. So. It's hard. Real it's quick, hard. Real quick, I'm sorry. But just like what you're going over, all of the prophets went through that same example. Joseph was humbled. Uh, Moses was humbled. Christ was humbled. All of these prophets had, you know, some some of them had a way of life. But they had to get that up in order to follow Christ. But it's, but it's hard for them to process what you just said when they put Moses, Peter, Christ, um, Ezekiel, Jeremiah, he in the same category as Peter Pan, Snow White in the Seven Doors right, and right, Superman, right. Batman, and everything is all, all it's, 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 you know, it's, it's a uh, Marvel Convo or something, Comet or something. Right, mm. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's, it's all, it's all fairy it's tales. Issues, right, right. It's not true. It sounds good, but these people didn't actually go through this. Right. They didn't actually change their life. That's what they say. Now, that's the old way of thinking. Right. You know what I'm saying? That's the old way of thinking and not understanding that the same trials and tribulations that they went through, you have to go through. That's right. It's about sacrificing. Back then, yes, they sacrificed bull, goats, and lambs. Now you got to sacrifice your own pleasures. That's right. Mm. Can you do that? That is difficult. That's what the, the captain is going to in verse um, 26. You know, just, just the suffering and the things that you got to esteem amongst yourself. And what and what you want to um where your investments going? Right. And our people preparing to, like you got a, the mindset that we have today, right? We preparing to, we preparing for to re, for retirement, like you said, sixty five, right? And that's above our generation, not our generation, but sixty five, right? It's probably even further down, seventy or something, 70 right? Now, 70. But my point is, you put you storing away money, right? So when you get old, you can still live. But we got a kingdom coming where you go have. New bodies, well, you're not going to get old. Well, you ain't got to put no money to the side. You're going to live forever. So as kept bringing out, like, the mindset that we have is on a, a, on a low scale. Mm. And, that's your, and that's another thing, Cap. I think I was talking to Officer about it. He made, a, he made a valid point, a heavy point, is to where a lot of people who are believing and investing in Esau Kingdom and saying, I got to get to a certain age to get a retirement. Right. And you got you to get old to live life. That's crazy. But that's crazy. That, it makes no sense. It makes no sense. But guess what? And what the officer, the point that he made was that the virus are attacking the older generation. Right. So a lot of them probably won't even see their retirement. Pretty much. Mm. Everything they didn't work for. Mm. But then you look at us say we sacrifice everything. But guess what? We sacrifice everything for the kingdom of heaven. That's right. That's right. right. So then I'm going to be rewarded. Esau can't reward you in anything right now At because all. his kingdom on the down slope. Right. Mm. He can't re really, really reward himself. That's right. Hey, real quick, yeah. we're talking about faith, right? Mm -hmm. And like y'all are bringing out, especially when you're talking about uh, Esau in this world versus building something for us, the kingdom. A lot of people don't understand that when it comes to faith, your words and your actions or your works, they have to match. We have we have Israel here. They were saying, well, we have Christians here. We have those who don't believe. So, oh, I believe. 
Oh, I, oh yeah, I just call on his name. Okay, well, the scriptures tell you faith without works is exactly. dead. Okay, so you're saying that you believe, but you go and put in works for another nation. You say you love God, you wanna, you're going to keep his commandments, but yet you go put the work in on the Sunday church and following the Easter's. Uh, um, trying to live that lifestyle like you said putting in that work trying to save money for this world for this retirement that chances are you're not going to see you know israel doesn't understand your faith and your works have to match if you say that you believe you say that you have faith in what the most high is telling you then you should be doing what you should be putting works toward what you believe in what the scripture says like the, like, the, like the examples you're bringing out, like with Moses. Moses was faithful. How was he proven faithful? Through the works that he done. What about Abraham? Same thing. He was proven faithful through the works that he had to go through. Noah was proven faithful by putting forth the work that he had to do. Because fear could have been a, a betrayer to Moses mm -hmm. in that time. Because mm -hmm. do you not understand the the high position that Moses was in before he made that decision? Mm. To where when people don't understand when you were exiled, when you run from you know I me mean, from, from from quote unquote judgment, mm. well he he ran to nowhere. It, it was like it was it was a um you was a it's like you was almost putting your life at risk or death. You know what I'm saying? When you just exile, that's why a lot of them, them little, them, them little cities, they always stay because once you leave, you, you that's pending death. Where you gonna go? You in the desert? You in the middle of nowhere? You know what I'm saying? Then you got the the, the savages, you got the, the the barbarians out there who, who have no laws, right. no land. They just roll runners. You know what I'm saying? Putting yourself out there. To be taken advantage of to die. Right. And but then, you need to lead with somebody. Right. Basically. Not knowing where you're going to end them. Not, right. where you, not knowing where you'll get your food from. You know what I'm saying? You had a, a lot of times people don't want to break that security. You know what I'm saying? To where Moses had a, a comfortable life that he was, you know what I mean? That he was uh, uh, attended to. You know what I'm saying? That he was, he was, he had, this, he had his food. He had a, a, a certain prestige, a certain quality of life to where you 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 forfeit that or sacrifice that for a people that don't that get beat up every day that gets mistreated. Right. That's why your elect officials and your celebrity and your superstars they don't want to help you right. because they know that comes with a price. A whole bunch of backlash. To where it, when they help you, you too ignorant to understand that you've been helped because they didn't understand they were helped. You gonna kill us like you did the Egyptian? Right. And then they say, you know, it's a lonely road. It's a lonely road to where brothers just say, you know what, I, you know what, I'm not going to help. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm just going to turn a blind eye and ignore it. Right. That's right. Um, okay, so keep reading. Verse 27, mm -hmm. I mean, verse 26. Six. Esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures in Egypt, mm -hmm. for he had respect unto the recompense of the reward. He, he had respect unto the recompense. Of the reward, because he know, he knew that the Most High was gonna pay them Egyptian back for for doing what they did to his people, the children of Israel, all the afflictions that was upon them. He knew it's a recompense coming from that. You know what I'm saying? Keep reading. Verse twenty seven. What, what, what side to choose? Basically, <laughs> go ahead. Verse twenty seven. Uh -huh. By faith he forsook Egypt. Not fearing the wrath of the king. You, you, that's, you see that? That's heavy. We've been saying that all day. By faith. By faith. By faith. He said by faith. He forsook the Egyptian. He forsook the security, the comfort, the safety of the Egyptians. Like Cap was going into. That, that uh, confederacy. He, he forsook that. But put faith and trust in the most high. He didn't fear the wrath of the king. But the most high, keep reading. For he endured as seeing him who is invisible. Mm -hmm. The invisible, that's going back to the verse one. All right. Faith without seeing. All right. Okay. So with that, jump to verse 13. Verse 13. Because these men, the examples that we've given you, did they see the promise or what was promised to them? They still kept their faith throughout the whole thing. Abraham, Noah, uh, Moses, throughout the whole uh, process of life, 
they, did Moses see the promised land? Did Abraham? No. Right. Well, yeah. But, <laughs> but he, didn't, he didn't go there. Okay. The point is, they didn't reach the next pinnacle of, of that. You know what I'm saying? Of the promise that the Most I promised them. All right? And we haven't saw that. But our faith is without sin. Because we ain't see none of these things. But our faith, and through, of course, the, the, the uh, truth of the Bible and the uh, revealing of it, has strengthened our faith to now believe in something that we thought was the white man's book, right? But to now know it's the true book, and our faith has grown to understand, okay, I have a, the most high is bringing a kingdom to come that won't ever be taken away. All right? That's where our faith is. And if we don't see it in our generation, our faith, as Cap brought out, is to know we're going to be risen. All right? We're going to be taken up in them chariots and, and get to the next level in the wilderness. And some people, I say that Moses died. He, he died. He didn't. He, he wasn't able to reap the, the fruit of his labor. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? Because society teach you that, the benefits of his labor. You know what I'm saying? That's what society teach you. Pull yourself up by your bootstrap, and you get everything that you're rewarded for. I mean, that you work hard for. But it don't really work like that with the most high. Right. It doesn't work like that. Sometimes you got to put that labor in, and you don't get, you don't reap the benefits in this life. You probably, you're going to reap the benefits in the next life. That's because right. you got to remember, everybody, the most high is just and merciful to, to recompense everything. Every right. good deed that you've done mm -hmm. is going to be recompensed. Mm -hmm. That's right. Read verse 13. Verse 13. These all died in faith, not having received the promises. But having seen them afar off and were persuaded of them and embraced them and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. Mm -hmm. That's where we at today. We strangers and pilgrims on this earth because this ain't our kingdom. This don't have nothing to do with us. We, we got to be here and we got to uh, live through it and, and be oppressed and everything else. But we know it's a kingdom that's coming that's going to be our kingdom. It's going to be the kingdom that the most high God. He's bringing his son back to set up. You understand? So Moses prophesied of who? Christ. And just, just to touch on, because I can't, you can touch on all the prophets that went through hell, right? But you got Stephen. You got uh, James, Peter, John. You got all, all the apostles, the 12. You got Israel, the prophets. We went through it. We went through that hell, you know, but I'm going to go to Christ because he's the pinnacle of everything. You know what I'm saying? That's why faith and trust lean on him because he had to come to be that example in the flesh, right? Not this, you know, mythical thing or, or person or Cesar Borgia as the world has painted, right? So let's go to uh, Hebrews 2 and 16. Moses prophesied of Christ. The Torah written, Moses prophesied of Christ. He had to come. He had to be that sacrificial lamb. He had to endure and be seen of man because God come on the street say that was a fairy tale. You know what I'm saying? But the scriptures tell you it wasn't a fairy tale. Okay? He was risen and seen. After he was put to death, he was risen and seen of over 500. Okay? Uh, where are we going? Oh, Hebrews 2. The book of Hebrews chapter 2 and verse 16. Mm -hmm. For verily he took not on him the nature of angels, but he took on him the seed of Abraham. Mm -hmm. The seed of Abraham. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He came through that, that uh, lineage. Go ahead. Wherefore, in all things, it behooved him mm -hmm. to be made like unto his brethren. It behooved him, mean made necessary. It was necessary for Christ to come in the flesh. Because he had to show and prove. This is always the, our people. They go back to the Hebrews uh, 1, 11 and 1. Faithful is the substance of things hoped for, the things not seen. But we had to see that because Israel lacked what? Faith. All right. We had to see Christ go through everything that we went through in the flesh to believe, to have faith, to trust in God that he would deliver us, to trust that the Most High would look out for his children. Keep reading. That he might be a faithful high priest mm -hmm. in things pertaining to God, to make reconciliation for the sins of the people. For That's in what, that he himself had suffered being tempted, he is able to succor them that are tempted. Right. So it's showing you that Christ had to come back 
and be that reconciliation to who? The children of Israel. So we can have a, a relationship again with our father. All right. These things had to happen. All right. And Christ had to go through the afflictions of being hated, being spit on. Okay. By his people. All right. His people is the ones that hated him and delivered him up to who? To the enemy. All right. Go to Matthew 27 and 1. Matthew 27 and 1. It's the book of Matthew, chapter 27 and verse 1. Mm -hmm. When the morning was come, all the chief priests and elders of the people took counsel against Jesus to put him to death. You see that? That's our people right there. When, because that's the choices, like Cap said, you have to make. You got to, you go either stand on the right side. Christ knew what he, he came to fulfill. All right. He had a mission. This is the other examples we use. They were children of God and they had a mission. They didn't detour detour from that mission rather they stayed on that mission their job okay that vow that they made to god to fulfill what was written of them all right keep going verse two mm -hmm. and when they had bound him they led him away and delivered him unto pontius pilate the governor mm -hmm. then so, judas okay so jump to verse uh 27 matthew chapter 27 and verse 27 then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the common hall mm -hmm. and gathered unto him the whole band of soldiers, mm -hmm. and they stripped him and put him put on him a scarlet robe. Mm -hmm. And when they had planted a plated, my apologies, planted. and when they had plaited a crown of thorns, they put it upon his head. So it's basically showing you that the afflictions and the pain and the disrespect and mockery and all these things that Christ had to go through. Christ Bring had to out. suffer these things for who? For our sake. For the children of Israel. Go ahead. And when they had plaited a crown of thorns, they mm -hmm. put it upon his head mm -hmm. and a reed in his right hand mm -hmm. and they bowed the knee before him and mocked him saying, Hail, King of the Jews. You see, this is, this is what Christ had to go through. Showing you how much more you as Christ, I mean, as Captain brought out in, in uh, what's that, Romans 12, we have to what? Sacrifice ourselves as Christ sacrificed, sac sacrifice himself to understand that we have to go, we're going to go through all these afflictions and suffer as Christ, right? Okay, keep reading. And they spit upon him mm -hmm. and took the reed mm -hmm. and smote him on the head. All this is what? Disrespect. All this is saying, because remember another part they speak of him um uh, uh basically uh like what do you say um, take yourself off the cross I'm, I'm bitter but yeah save yourself basically you know what i'm saying right come down right so it's through this whole thing and through us going through all these afflictions they're mocking us day to day 42 yeah read 42 read. yeah read that Matthew 27 and verse 41 through 42. Mm -hmm. Likewise, also the chief priests mocking him with the scribes and elders said. You know who that be, right? That's us. That's us. We hate our own people. The one that say they know the Bible. Right. The right. one walk with the, the, the suit on and the, and the, and the tie and, right. and have their own church. Yeah, they're at the church today. With they're at the church. Yeah. Exactly. They're at the church today. Got the helicopters mm -hmm. and, the, and the limousines and right. everything else. And they right. talk soft. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. That's them. The one that say they love God. They got a relationship with God. These are the same people today back on the earth that hate the prophet, that hate God, basically. Saying they the they, they the minister of God, right? They here to heal the people. Mm -hmm. They here to be a good example. Right. They here to lead the people out of darkness into the light. They they have the ultimate charity, right. the patience, the understanding of God's word. That's them individuals right there. That's right to show you that they say that um if 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 God is not um if God is not dealing with them on the pastors on Sunday, then why they not seeing what y'all seeing? Right. If God is if if God is dealing with them. You know, people say a lot of foolishness when they come and talk to us on the street. Right. They say, then why my pastor not saying what y'all saying? He's not saying that what we saying because he know that it's not going to profit him. 
And let's ask yourself, why don't your pastors and the chief priests and the scribes have the same spirit that Christ had? That's what you should ask yourself. Right, right. That's right. They was on one accord to come against Christ just as today. All these different sets of Christianity is on one accord to come against the Israelites, to come against those that's teaching the true gospel of the Bible, the true understanding. All right, keep going. Likewise, also the chief priests mocking him with the scribes and elders said, he saved others. Him, himself, he cannot save. If he be the king of Israel, let him now come down from the cross and we will believe him. He so, trusted in God. Mm -hmm. Let him deliver him now if he will have him. For he said, I am the son of God. Right. So this is the mocking that they did to Christ. It's the same mocking we go get today. The same things that Christ went through Israel, we have to go through ourselves. We have to be afflicted. We have to be persecuted. We have to be mocked. Right. We have to be speaking, spoken evil of. That's what they do. Y'all if y'all Israelites, why y'all ain't over there in y'all homeland? Right. Y'all the Israelites, why y'all going why y'all ain't been uh persecuted? Right. You know? Right. Putting allegations against right. us as a as a congregation. This, that and the third of things that happen, you know, throughout our URC. All these things because they hate God. They hate the truth. Y'all mad cause y'all can't get a job. Right. Why are we mad because we can't get a job? You know, a lot of us left jobs, left right. good paying jobs. Right. You sacrifice that. But can I show them a, a why they had so much hatred right. mm -hmm. for Christ? Right. John 7 and 7. And this is where your suffering is going to have to come in. This is where your faith is going to have to come in. That's right. Because Christ already knew this. The the uh, the, the the prophets knew this. When you read Amos for, uh, but 5 and 10, it's in the same thing right here, the same thing what Christ went through. It's just showing you the level of evil and wickedness of our people. Read. The book of John, chapter 7 and verse 7. The world cannot hate, the world cannot hate you, but me it hated. So you telling me the word hate, the world hate Christ? That's what Christ said. Christ said the world hate me. He didn't say they have a misunderstanding of me. He said they hate me. Right. Watch this. So if you hate Christ and Christ said, I come to do the will of my father, who else you hate? I, you hate God. Anybody who's walking Christ like the world is going to hate. Now the Bible makes sense to me. When I heard that, I'm like, oh, wow, the Bible makes sense because I, the, the prophets, the disciples went through all this hell and all of a sudden the world loved the Bible? Sense. It doesn't make sense. Why? Because you're because you 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 going off five percent of understanding of the Bible. The other seventy five percent once again going to your job, going the other twenty percent going to your, your your family. And what is that? Christmas, uh, uh, family reunion, Halloween. You know that's what your 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 um your twenty percent is your twenty your twenty percent is going. And the other five percent is you don't know God. God love everybody. That's what the world taught you. And then when somebody go against what your God taught you, then you're going to have a problem with us. Watch, it's going to say it. Verse 7, the world cannot hate you, but me it hated because I testify of it that the works thereof are evil. You see that? That's when the world is going to hate you because the, what you testify, the works that they are doing are evil. And what are those works? Just like the um, the officer brought out, your faith without works is dead. A lot of times we learn to uh, uh, exalt the Most High with our mouth, but our, our heart, we decline. So he said, Christ said, this is why they're going to kill me. This is why they're going to mock me. The same people is thinking they righteousness, they are righteous by putting you to death. What in the Bible it says that at? The man that's upstanding, holy, and, and just that put him to death. The Bible says something opposite of that in Proverbs 17 and 15. It said, who condemn the righteous? And how I go? It said, he that condemn the just and uh, um, uphold. I forgot it. Give Proverbs 17. I don't want to butcher it. He that condemned the just. Read it. The book of 
Proverbs chapter 17 and verse 15. He that justified the wicked there you go. and he that condemneth the just, even they both are abomination to the Lord. You see that? And a lot of us do that. And that's what the Pharisees and scribes was going through. They said, if we let this man alone, the Romans will come and take our seat, come and take our authority, come and take our place. And the people were start because they know they, what they was doing was evil and wicked. But guess what? They was manipulating the people just like our people did, in, um, just like the leaders did in Greece, in, in the Greek captivity. Go to uh, one more. It's Corinthians uh, first. I think it's four and three to show you what I said to where. Uh, this is the book of Second Corinthians, chapter four and verse three. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost and whom the God of this world had blinded the minds of them which believe not lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. Did we not just say that? If they hated Christ, because Christ said they hate me. Why? Because I testify of their evil. So we can be talking about the uh, um, so-called oppression, the things that we went through, and everybody be like, all praise, all praise, all praise. Do you know why we went into captivity? Oh, why? What happened? Because of sin. Oh, sin. Yeah, I thought about that. Yes. You know what those sins, you know what sin is? Um, anything against God. No. Go get first John 4, I mean 3. I mean get first John 3. And show them sin is a transgression of the law. Oh, okay, I never knew that. So do you know what some of those laws that was enforced that we broke? Um, murder? Yes. The Ten Commandments, yes. Okay. Um, what about um homosexuality? Huh? Um, God love everybody. God made them this way. You see the you see the spirit slowly, the clock slowly turn, the temperature turn up when you start bringing them laws out. That's why Christ said they hated me because I spoke of their evil. Right. Um. Do you know that? Do you know that you're not supposed you're not supposed to have just? I know your mother told you that. Go play the field. Go find the right man. Have a man for everything that you need. But God said you can't do that, sister. God said have one man. And give your and, and and you listen to him, and he's the head of you. What? Submit yourself, sister. Submit oh, myself. I'm what? a part of a women rights movement, boy. Right. It's a feminine movement. You and messing with my I'm money? I don't need a man. You know what you're talking I, about. I not take care of him. Who you not think you is? You and, ain't nobody. Right. So these are the things to where, hey, brother, you got you got to put the guns down. You can't sell drugs to your people. Do you know you hate your people doing that? No, I love my people. But who are you who are you shooting up? Who are you killing? Who you give who you giving drugs to? That is a form of hatred. And guess what? When you tell them they are in hate, they reverse it and say that you are a hate group. You see that? So therefore, that's, right. that's why the, the Pharisees and the scribes had to go and, 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 and manipulate a lot of our people to say that Christ is blasphemy. And that's what that's what the world gonna do. That's how the world hate Christ, and they are gonna hate you because you Christ like. That's right. Remember the the world they have the minds of the people basically through their devices, popular persuasion, right? Through radio, music, TV, media, movies, all these things they have the people focused, just like Deacon was talking about. Hypnotized. COVID, 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 right? Hypnotized. Hypnotized. And you that's know right. what our people doing when you correct them, and and they know what you're saying is right. Right. They say I. Please, Esau, have bring something type of uh, 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 um, device, some type of movie, some type of show, some type of documentary to prove them wrong, so I can go back to my normal life. Cause they have me in the, they have me in bitter constraint right now right, right. because they got me with, with God's word. Right. But please, Esau, my God, offset what they saying, please, so I can go back to the club and feel good at what I do. Clear my conscience, please. That's what the people are saying. When we, you can see them that they, they stuck. They don't have nothing to say, camp. They don't have nothing to say. But when Esau come, or if somebody who uh, uh, agree with them, they all of a sudden they just break out. Yeah, they, they, they get encouraged then. You know what I'm saying? Zeal jumping to them. Um, we're going to shut it down. Go to uh, Hebrews 10 and 23. 
Because at the end of all this, Israel, we're showing you that throughout everything, your faith and trust have to lie in the Most High. All right? Through all this affliction, all these different uh, plagues and, and uh, things that's going to come to the earth, it's going to touch us. All right? But your faith and trust lies in the Most High to understand that it's a better day coming. Okay? It's a brighter day coming. Sam Cook, a change going to come. Right. That's it. That's, that's Jake's favorite song. Don't sing it, Kwanzaa. All right. Uh, <laughs> read that. It's the book of Hebrews, chapter 10 and verse 23. Yes, Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering. This is the key thing, Israel. We got to hold fast. Hold fast our profession of our hope. Because that's what we read earlier in Romans uh, 15 and 4. I hope. The things written the fourth time, I hope, in that Christ is coming back to redeem and save his people. That's also quoted in Luke 1 and 68 on down. I hope in that we get in the kingdom, all right? And once we go through these the wildernesses and th these different stages after this, our hope is that we're going to be a, a part of the 144,000. This is our hope, all right, without wavering. Because all these things that's happening right now, can cast that doubt in your mind and make you waver. Now you was hot as hell at one point. Now you didn't turn into lukewarm. You know what I'm saying? Now you're scared to say certain things. Now you're scared to, you know, stand for the most high. And now you're ashamed of what you were pushing at one time. All right? Trimming your ways. All that is real. So, I pray y'all got something from this class. Huh? Yeah? No, you can't. So I pray y'all got something from this class, and, and y'all just need to go back and meditate on this thing to know that your faith in a time of affliction, the most eyes is examining you right now. All right, Israel? So stay strong um, and stay encouraged, all right? Uh, remember, um, as we always say, to go to the uh, – original royalty all right uh to go and continue to to help support us all right with the bibles the apocryphers um the apparel we have on there the music um the calendars everything we have on there is for you you know what i'm saying for your benefit all right and all go, all the funds go back to help israel all right um as well the um the uh the fundraiser which is goes back to the uh booster club all right Lord willing, you know, we be able to travel again, you know. Uh, <laughs> the, the donations y'all given, uh, whatever it may be, is going to help that, the traveling, the four corners of the earth, then the end shall come, all right? So everything that we're doing is of the scriptures, and with your support and help, you help it manifest that thing, all right? Remember to go to IUIC Houston, um, to our YouTube, and subscribe, all right? Become a member, um, and start following us, all right? Um, as well as... Uh, what's on the website today, which is uh, israelunite.org uh, slash COVID-19. All the stuff that's on there that Dick and Malachi have brought out, you know what I'm saying, for us, um, those that need help, you know what I'm saying, for us, you got to work, um, filing for unemployment, all these different things is on there for your benefit, all right, Israel? We're looking out for our people. The deacons, they went above and beyond. The sisters that put it together, they went above and beyond to make sure that Israel is taken care of, all right? You got one-stop shop. All right. So with that, Israel, uh, we pray that everybody have a good and safe rest of your day. And Lord willing, uh, next week on Wake Up Jacob, we'll see you then. All right, Israel. We say shalom. Most high Christ bless y'all. Shalom. shalom. Most high Christ, 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 Christ bless. Shalom, Israel. Most we used to scream black power while Haram was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.